For this exercise, we wish to find areas that are high ground and areas that are flat ground, a combination of both of those data sets. What do we have for input layers? First of all, we have a DEM, a digital elevation model from the USGS. The low elevation in this area, Blair, Nebraska, is 302 meters. The high elevation is 419 meters. That's elevation above sea level. From that UTM data set, what we did was we made a slope map. So this is a data set that contains low slopes all the way up to the steepest slopes, which are 46%. We also have, from the raw DEM, made a hill shade, which is basically a model, a representation of the Earth's surface, so that we can visualize the valleys and hills of the area and the floodplain. I have also placed on here a USA topo maps layer from the USGS and a world imagery layer for reference. These are streaming down from ArcGIS Online. The first thing we need to do is to create a raster that meets our elevation criteria, namely greater than or equal to an elevation of 380 meters. So the easiest way to do that is through the search box. We're going to search for raster calculator and there's my raster calculator tool. It's part of Spatial Analyst. Okay, there is the raster calculator. So what do I want to do? I want to select all of the cells in my raster where the elevation is greater than or equal to 380. My output I'm going to name as elev OK. In other words, it's where the elevations are meeting the criteria. And that will be stored as a raster data set. I'm going to say OK there. And complete it. So go ahead and close. My OK on the elevation, in other words, the high ground is out here, the blue areas, where the cells evaluated to zero in my new raster did not meet my criteria, uh, criterion, namely that they are less than 380 meters in elevation. Let's go ahead and turn on the hill shade briefly so we could compare. So what I can do now is I can make one of these layers transparent. In the effects toolbar there are several tools. One of them is a transparency tool. Now I can see that the high ground was selected. Another way to do this is to make the zero values transparent. Looking at the digital raster graphic or topographic map underneath the new values here, I can see that my high elevations, which are the hills, are in blue. My low elevations, which are the gully and the floodplain, are going to show up hollow, which is what I set it to. So I can just pan around the map here and verify that the high elevations are the ones selected. Great. It's a good idea to do that in standard practice when you're, when you're working on combining and overlaying uh, layers inside your GIS-based analysis. Be sure to check each step of the way. Make sure that your results are what you think you should have gotten. My next criterion is to find areas in the study area that have a slope under 5. Okay, so good old raster calculator again. Let's do a search, and there's our raster calculator once more. This time, we're going to say, please, GIS, give me all of the areas where the slope is under 5. The output, let's name and let's call that slope OK. Excellent. And let's go ahead and run that. Okay, these are areas in blue where the slope is flat. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map underneath there and make these zeros hollow. Panning around the map, I can see that the floodplain off to the northeast is coded as a 1. And that makes sense because those were that's a flat area 
and also the high hills and the low valleys. Okay, excellent so far. Now I want to combine these two rasters. In other words, I want to find areas where the slope is less than 5 and the elevation is greater than or equal to uh, 380 meters. So, to do that, it's once again the raster calculator. This time, I'm going to say, please GIS, give me all the areas where the slope OK is evaluated to 1. And you know what? I need some parens around this. So I'm going to do that. And the elevation OK evaluates to 1. In other words, true, or in other words, greater than or equal to 380 meters. So I've got parens around both of those parts of the expression, and I've got an ampersand, which tells me uh, that I'm going to combine those two raster uh, data sets. The output, I'm going to call elev OK, slope OK. No spaces, no underscores. I'm going to keep that name short. OK, so now save and go ahead and run that. and it is now completed. Let's once again use our best practices model and take a look at what we've got. First of all we have areas where the elevation is okay. That's the areas in blue here. These yellow areas are areas where the slope is okay. In other words where it's flat. So once again high ground, flat ground. This last layer that we just created are where both criteria are met. In other words, where it's high and flat. Let's zoom in on an area just to verify. Okay, these are the high areas, these are the flat areas, and these are the areas that intersect both. Let's go ahead and turn on our digital raster graphic so we can see what's behind here. Okay, as suspected, looking at the digital raster graphic or the topographic map, we've got high and flat areas shown in this reddish color. Let's take a look at the imagery just to verify. Let's zoom out a bit. Yep, as suspected, these are the high and flat areas in the Lewis Hills of eastern Nebraska. Now, this same technique can be used with other raster data sets what we've done is we've combined two raster layers in order to make a decision that will eventually lead us to where we want to locate these fire towers.